So for my country report, I had the country Rwanda, and as the background for the entire presentation, I decided to showcase the country's flag and its colors and kind of the symbolism within it. So I think that it's a great kind of representative, even though it's simple, of what the country is about. Very sunny place. Okay. So some basic information on the country. Um, its capital is Kigali. I want to make sure I pronounce that right. Um, it is a geographically remote country and it has one of the largest population densities in sub-Saharan Africa. So even though it's a very small country, it is densely populated. And its scenery, um, kind of, you know, the land layout of the country is very reminiscent to a tropical Switzerland. Um, one of its dominant characteristics is that it has a chain of mountains that are actually part of the Congo-Nile divide. So that's kind of one of the most physical markers of its landscape. Um, the elevation accounts for the usually moderate temperatures of Rwanda, and it doesn't really get lower than 70 degrees, and it can pretty much range in any temperature higher than that. So that kind of is with the sun on the flag. Um, there are major differences between uh, the volcanoes in the northwest. Um, intense rainfall is followed by lower average temperatures, and it's colder and drier within the inland highlands. So there are ranging climates and different kinds of weather that the country has for it being so small, but normally it's a very, you know, um, tame climate. A uh, limited portion of the area is covered by natural forest trees, and its biggest tourism attraction is actually among the volcanoes, not the forests. It is a mountain gorilla, which is protected in the Parque Nacional des Volcans. So I actually included a picture of the mountain gorilla at the top. Um, that is a very important animal to its tourism attractions and the country in general. Uh, the major ethnic groups in Rwanda are Hutu and Tutsi. And the country has three official languages, Rwanda, English, and French, and Christianity has had a profound effect in Rwanda. So most of the people that live there, um, the religion it pertains to Christianity. So some health information for travelers and suggestions if you ever want to visit Rwanda. Um, in terms of COVID-19 related travel restrictions, which we know in this time that there are a lot, uh, their largest international airport in the capital, Kigali Airport, is open and it's operating. Um, land borders, however, right now are closed um, except for Rwanda citizens. All arrivals have to give proof of a negative COVID-19 test within 120 hours of arriving into the country. And right now, kind of like we experienced back in the spring, there is a curfew in place from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. And like in New Jersey, and I wish in most parts of the United States, Face masks must be worn at all times in public. So travelers to Rwanda, uh, if you want to go, uh, you will have to require certain vaccines upon entry into the country. Um, that typically includes hepatitis A, typhoid fever, yellow fever, uh, meningitis and polio, as well as malaria, prophylaxis, and traveler's diarrhea. Uh, all travelers must have an antibiotic with them and an anti-diarrheal medication to use immediately if uh, the disease becomes serious. Uh, cholera outbreaks uh, occur annually in Rwanda, so that's also a factor to consider when visiting. Uh, no swimming, wading, or rafting in fresh water sources is recommended uh, because of bacteria and parasites. Um, also, hospital services are restricted. There are not many hospitals and medical services. And due to the risk of malaria and yellow fever, pregnant women are advised to not travel to Rwanda. So some of the current major health issues that are affecting the country, aside from COVID-19, like everywhere else, uh, malaria is a big problem in Rwanda. Uh, it's, as you know, a disease, and if you don't, a disease spread by mosquitoes, and it remains a significant health problem in Rwanda. Since 2012, the country has been experiencing an upsurge of cases of malaria. Um, the entire population is considered to be at risk. Uh, there is no certain... Uh, vulnerable groups. Everyone can get it. December and January are peak months, though, for infection. And according to the World Health Organization, WHO, the factors that are contributing to malaria increase in Rwanda include um, non-universal coverage of interventions, 
uh, the resistance to certain insecticides and the climate change with uh, increasing temperature and environmental modification. So all those factors together have resulted in climbing malaria cases in the country. Uh, its global peace rank uh, comes in at 81, and according to the latest Global Peace Index, GPI, Rwanda rose four positions from the past year, ranking 81st out of 163 countries that were studied worldwide, and has an overall score of 2.049. And to kind of designate it to its continent, it is the most peaceful country in Africa. And here's a video about Rwanda and how they hope to draw tourists in after the COVID-19 pandemic. The world has gone quiet. Our borders have closed. The skies are empty, but our hearts still beat loudly for connecting the world to our culture, our history, and our natural beauty. We stand for unity, for being together. That's why we know this difficult time will pass. Greet our friends and family with the biggest smiles and the tightest hugs. We'll travel the world again, exploring new destinations, feeling that rush of adrenaline. We'll discuss matters of the world and exchange ideas. We'll dress up, go out and taste new delights. We'll climb that mountain, swim those waters, and trek to experience the wonders of nature. But for now, let's stay home and stay safe. The world will open for business once more. And when it does, we'll be waiting with open arms. We can't wait for you to visit Randasu. So I thought that that was an awesome representation of the country and its landscape and its culture and the life of the people there. Um, you know, it is for promotional purposes, but I think it just kind of demonstrates the kind of country that Rwanda is and how it's grown over the years, over the centuries into kind of a more uh, developed country in general. Um, so, to include the information from the CIA, um, the population of Rwanda is 12,712,431 people. Um, as I mentioned before, I think in a previous slide, the ethnic groups that hail to the area are the Hutu, the Tutsi, and the Twa. Um, with Rwanda's fertile ecosystem, food production frequently does not keep up with demand, and that requires them to have many food imports from other countries. Um, its government is a presidential republic uh, with President Paul Kagame, and he is pictured uh, <laughs> under the map in this slide. Um, the military uh, includes the Rwanda Defense Force, the Rwanda Army, Air Force, and Reserve Force. Um, in order to join the military service, which is voluntary, you have to be at least 18 years of age. Uh, there's no conscription, and citizenship is required. Kind of mirrors the U.S. in that way. Um, so if you're looking to travel there and you're considering airfare, um, from a little bit closer to us, from Nork Air International Airport to Kigali International Airport, a round-trip flight with two stops. Um, it, I, in my research, I found that it was kind of difficult to find a non-stop flight to Rwanda just because of where it is located. Um, this round-trip flight option uh, 
with two stops, price is at $2,912, and Ethiopian Airlines does fly there. Um, the first stop will be Loam Airport, and then Addis Ababa, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, so yeah, it will be about a 16-hour flight if you are considering traveling there, so definitely be prepared to sleep a lot. So this is the collage that I created that I feel is a great representation of the country Rwanda. Um, in its essence, it's very prominent with its earthy tones and its emphasis on the people and the culture and the dance and the art, even the food and the markets um, and the sports. It's all what makes Rwanda Rwanda for the people that live there. So in order to go into greater depth about what composes this collage, I'm going to explain it in the next slides. So featured in that collage is the Hutu heritage. So it is said that the Hutu originated in the focal East Africa in the first century, and they are still present in Rwanda today. Uh, Hutu life fixated on horticulture, and it depended uh, who you socialized with on the tribe, and trivial rulers um, fought over restricted spaces. But the Hutu's relationships and the way its tribe was composed um, is taken from Tutsi culture, just within their same significance of cows. Um, cows and cattle are praised by the Hutus. And the Hutu and the Tutsi cling to similar strict convictions, such as Christianity. It very it mirrors that, and they do practice it. So they are a large part of the collage, you know, one of the biggest pictures, because they are important to it. Um, as you saw in the collage, the basketry. Um, in recent years, basketry has become a route for Rwandan women to converge. Uh, Woven basketry containers and building compo components established the most far and wide type of articulation. It was an art form to them. Um, it may seem in to other countries as a more simplistic form of art, but it's a very articulate process and it requires patience. And the women that created these pieces uh, were making key instruments for cultivating exercises and it, they were vital components in the development of storage for them to hold food and other items and being used in bee sanctuaries and even as fish nets. So it relates to the way in which the people live and gather their food and supplies. Um, so as you saw in the collage, there were people dancing and celebrating life and perhaps one of the most grounded mainstay of Rwandan culture is the conventional dance. Um, music and dance have been a fundamental piece of their society. Um, the regional dances, the traditional ones, uh, they're known for their elegance and the drumming. The drumming is a large part of the dances. Uh, the Intour dance is famous at numerous festivals. Uh, it's done at weddings, public festivals, and just small celebrations. They love to dance and they love to feature the drums in any dance that they do. So also featured another uh, form of dance in that collage is the National Ballet of Rwanda. Um, shaped in 1974, uh, the National Ballet of Rwanda assembles craftsmen from various areas in Rwanda just to kind of promote the culture through music, dance, and once again drumming. Um, recently, the ballet has gained worldwide recognition and they have traveled to every part of the globe in order to showcase Rwanda's culture and all of its different um, varieties of ballet dancers and music. So to kind of break away from the dance, uh, the Impala Orchestra, those playing, singing in front of the microphones and playing the instruments, uh, this was well known in the mid-1980s for its interesting and varied style. Uh, it kind of intertwined with the components of the conventional Rwanda music, like the drumming styles and the regional dances. Um, and it has a touch of the Democratic Republic of the Congo's rumba and different classifications of African music that you might have heard. Um, it kind of just gives a Rwanda <laughs> feel to classical music and traditional African music as well. 
Um, so as you saw, there were kids playing uh, what we know as soccer, but in other countries, it's regarded as football. Um, football is the most popular sport in Rwanda. Um, senior and junior clubs contend and play, and the Rwanda Equip National Day Football includes the more refined players, so they do have a national league kind of like we do with soccer. They do. However, though, soccer is more football. Whoops. Uh, football is more popular here than it is in the United States. So another art form, just kind of like the basketry, ceramics. Um, the art of ceramics is profoundly attached to the nation's goods and materials. Um, it kind of, you know, just goes by the land. Uh, the sand, the rock, the limestone, and the water is put in a huge bowl, and it's utilized to eliminate soil and abundance material. Um, Rwandan earthenware painting regularly uses, utilizes four tones, blue, earthy colored, yellow, and dim produced waterway stones and soils. Uh, the most common ceramics that are produced are cups, saucers, and plates, and it's popular among the natives and tourists that visit there. So ceramics and bas basketry create some of the uh, country's most prominent tourist items. So one of my most uh, favorite things to learn about a country is the food. What is the food like there? Uh, because I've never <laughs> left the United States, so I'm always interested. And the food in Rwanda, as I showed in the collage, uh, you know, the beans, uh, it's basic yet special, and a typical Rwandan diet consists of yams, beans, corn, peas, malay, and other natural products. So it's based, it's very, I would say, whole grain. Um, they don't eat meat regularly, and those who do like to eat meat, uh, they usually eat fish because they would then live close to a lake, and that's usually tilapia. And in more metropolitan areas, uh, different foods like Indian, Chinese, Italian, and other African-styled cafes are accessible. So in the more rural areas, they work the land, and that's how they eat the food. In the more metropolitan areas, they kind of experiment with different uh, foods in general. So I just feel also an important component of what makes the country unique is their art. So in terms of Rwanda, the intense brilliant tones, eye-catching rhythms, and architecture marvels allure from this nation and it's dedicated to its specialties and culture. Um, as I showed in the collage, it's very bright, lots of murals. Um, the architecture is unique and different. Uh, it really makes Rwanda special and a lot of the artwork is sold in the open-air markets. And that is another thing I'm going to discuss, as I showed in the collage. Um, this is something that I wish the U.S. had more of. Um, Open-air markets. Uh, Rwanda has uh, lots of them where items and deals can be found. It's where people go to shop every day for food, clothing, anything. Uh, one of the more famous markets is the Kaplaki, co-usable in Kigali. Uh, here, neighborhood merchants have clubbed together to make a vivid shopping experience. It's a beautiful open-air market. And while there aren't numerous malls in Rwanda, um, if a, you or a tourist was searching for a shopping experience away from the markets, they could go to the Union Trade Center in Kigali. And that is it. Uh, Rwanda is a beautiful country that I believe is up and coming. And if they can work through their sustainable goals and pushing past the major health issues and kind of the wealth gap, I believe that they can thrive. Thank you.